Today we're doing more gel tangle, which is gel print plus zentangle. I'm also going to do a bit of doodling and add some washi tape to that. Hey guys, it's Amber Rain Davis from notableink.com and I thought we could start off today with a flip through my mixed media art journal. Um, this was part of the video that I created back in June 2021 when I first started this art journal. This is the opening page of the book and you can see that I just used some really bright colors and did some gel tangle there. I left this page blank because the pages weren't really sitting right, but I will go back and fill that in. I had another gel tangle video here. You can see I'm using more earth tones, that burnt sienna. Turquoise is a color that really excites me when I'm creating and also those cool blues that you can see here. I like a lot of high contrast with black and white, and you can see we've gone into the earth tones here. And I'm doing this flip through because when I, here's some little birds that I did in preparation for that page, the next page, but I was thinking about color palettes and what are those colors that really excite me? What are colors that I tend to struggle more with? And um, just thinking a little bit about how I choose color palettes. Um, here, this all started off with a green page on the left, and I really struggled with the dark green page that was on the left and got more bright and airy on the right. And then I went total opposite and went crazy bright with these colors on my next spread. Um, for me, there isn't one single color palette that really inspires me. It's more about how I'm feeling at any given moment. And today we're gonna to do some neutrals, which I don't do very often. I'm gonna start off with a five by seven gel plate and it already has some paint on it. You can see there's a lot of paint left over. I'm putting down some Payne's gray and some gold metallic acrylic paint. These are all acrylic paints. The ones that I have are from Amsterdam. I also have some flat paints that are from Michaels and Hobby Lobby. Um, the type of paint that you use is less important than the amount of paint that you use. So if you have thinner paints, you might need to use less paint. If you have thicker paints, um, maybe you need a little bit more. It's whatever paints you have, use those paints and kind of just play around and figure out how much of that paint do you need for the given technique that you're doing. So I have some gold. I didn't really want a smooth um amount of paint in here and you can see like I have a ton of paint left over on here so a lot of this paint gray isn't going to show up because I have all this white paint already left over on the plate and you can see that I have a bunch of green on there and that's from that previous page that I just showed you um, lots of turquoise and green actually from the two previous pages so I don't generally clean my gel plates. Um, in fact, I never clean my gel plates, but today I'll show you like, I'm getting kind of tired of this green that I have in the middle and I do wanna get that off. So I'm gonna show you how I do that, but still use the paint. So I like this mixture of the, the gray and the white and a little bit of gold in here. You can see that some of the paper is left blank and I am gonna fill that up a little bit going to add some more gold to this and I am going to speed through you know brayering here I'm brayering off on a piece of just uh notebook paper it's just from a legal pad and you can see that this page picked up some of that gray but this is more of a gold tone so I want to add a little more gray to this page over here because I want these two pages to color coordinate so I wanna get a little more of the paint off the plate and onto this page. But I really like those grays and you can see that the metallic is really nice on here. So I wanted more gold. This gold acrylic paint, it's okay, but it's not super shiny and reflective and I wanted something shinier. So I pulled out an alcohol ink. This one is from Pinata and it's a gold one. And you can see, I think it's mica powder that's moving around in the alcohol there, but you can just see it just dancing. This stuff is so reflective, which is what I wanted. So I just dripped some down onto the gel plate and I'm just gonna press this directly onto this page. I want these kind of blobs to squish out more. So I thought the best way to do that is just to put it down on the paper. And that's going to leave some on the plate, but it's also gonna transfer it to this page. 
and it is so sparkly you guys i love it look at that so much more sparkle than the acrylic paint which is what i was going for i thought i would try some white because i have some white acrylic paint on my desk as well so i'm just going to put that down that was less noticeable transferring the white with the plate so i'm going to take it directly to the page and see if i can get a little more impact with it just directly on the page this is kind of stuck i had to shake it pretty hard to get it to come out um and this doesn't show up it shows up but it doesn't show up like an acrylic a white acrylic paint paint for instance it's not super opaque on regular paper that may be different on upo paper and when you're using it in a typical alcohol ink fashion um, here I have buff titanium deep and I'm going to spread that over. Now remember I have the gold acrylic, um, not acrylic, a gold alcohol ink on here as well. And I want to transfer this to this piece of paper. So my brayer paper here. I want to start getting some of that paint in the middle off, but I want to be able to use the paint. I don't just want to clean it off and waste it because what happens when you have all that paint buildup is you get the most amazing texture, which you're going to see in a minute. Now I'm working on a glass mat and if you leave your paper side down and your gel plate on top for a minute, kind of like the moisture, um, gets trapped between the gel plate and the glass and it helps you to get more of that paint off so you're going to see some of it's going to come off but i'm going to need to do this a couple times now if i were to leave this for five minutes and come back probably all of it would have come off in one go if you leave it to sit for a couple minutes it's going to pull more and more of the paint off so i really like the textures there i also like that i can still see the blue lines of the paper coming through and i'm actually going to use this paper in one of my next gel or my art journal spreads so here i just put some champagne acrylic paint on here i'm gonna try and be patient and let this sit but i just I, you guys i can't i'm not patient enough what i have to do typically is get up and walk away and you can see that that paper is pretty wet that moisture gets trapped between the glass and the gel plate but look at the yummy texture all that paint in the middle gives because it creates almost like a stamped image with the shape of the paint and i think that's just gorgeous especially with that champagne paint it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it i love that page so i'm going to add some more here and i'm going to put this on the page i don't let this one sit but i am going to let this sit on the gold page and i will walk away go get a cup of coffee and come back and we're going to see that the majority of this paint in the center is going to transfer. So I'll set this down. I'll make sure I rub it so that it's got good contact. And then I'm going to walk away. So we come back and you'll see how much more of the paint is pulled off. And so this is how you can, instead of cleaning your plate, you can use all of this paint that you have left over because you can't just roll on paint and get it to look that like old world style like that. Um, really the gel plate is like the only thing that can create textures like that. I love it. Um, so you can see how clean the plate, it, plate is. I still have a little bit over there in the corner, so I'll leave that for now. And you can see that I've got some nice gray on this page now, which is what I wanted. So we've got two color coordinating pages here. I'll add some more of that white alcohol ink here and of course some gold make sure that when you're using your alcohol inks you're using them in a well ventilated room because they do have some fumes so make sure it's well ventilated and make sure that you um, shake them up especially if it's one of the metallic ones like this you want to get all that mica powder up off the bottom of the bottle and suspended in the solution before you start using it so I'm just dipping the tip into the puddles of alcohol ink that are on the page and I'm creating some dots. I wanna go outside the border of the page there. And that's another reason I love printing directly in my mixed media art journal is because I love the border. The main reason I start with a gel print usually when I'm doing art journaling like this is because for me, if I start with a blank page and I start to either sketch or draw or zentangle or even collaging, it's too much pressure. Like I have a really hard time 
with a blank page. But if I start with a gel print like this, it's so much easier for me to get inspired and get started with some kind of design because I don't ever sit down and have a plan in mind of this is what I'm going to do today. Generally, if I'm so instead of waiting for that alcohol ink to dry, I'm just putting the plate on there and picking up the excess with the plate and then I'll have that for my next print that I pull. And it just helps me like let things dry faster so that I can move on because again, I'm impatient. But so I, if I'm going to sit down and create, I might decide what color palette I'm going to use, but I don't necessarily decide, okay, this is what I'm going to draw or this is what I'm going to tangle. I kind of let the gel print guide me. Now, with all of this silver gray and gold going on over here, it puts me, it kind of has like a medieval feel. And so when I was thinking about tangles, one of the tangles that really has that kind of feel to me or like a chain mail kind of feel is called Huggins. And I'm doing a pattern called Crazy Huggins here. I'm using a Sakura Micron PN pen. And this is a pretty easy Zentangle pattern, but if you're not used to it, it can be a little confusing. Um, you, you start, you can do it in a grid, like a straight up grid that's, you know, even on all sides. But I like the crazy Huggins where all of the dots are not equidistant from each other. They're kind of wonky and it just has a little more character. With this pattern, you want to think about going inside, outside, inside, outside. So it's this alternating um, pattern. And I don't know why I didn't finish the other one before I started this one. That's a little bit weird for me to do that, especially if I'm trying to instruct you guys, but um, I'll show you a complete one so that you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going on the inside and you're basically connecting the two circles with a C shape or a parentheses. And you're just going around those two circles either on the inside or now this time I'm going on the outside. So to add a little top and connect these ones on the outside, I'm going around the outside. If I were to go on the inside of these two circles, I would end up drawing over the two lines that I already have there. And so that's how you'll know, kind of start your line. And if you're gonna cross over the line that's already there, you know you need to go the opposite direction. So the tops like this are gonna be on the outside and my sides will say will be the lines or the C shapes will be on the inside. So I'll draw a few more of these and I'll speed it up so that you can get the gist of it. Now this pen is not really working very well. I think that my paint is probably still a little bit damp or the paper is still a little damp. Um, so I've switched to an acrylic pen or a Posca pen, which really you guys, this sucker can draw on anything. So I generally end up using a Posca pen when I do, do gel tangle versus the Sakura pens because I feel like the Sakura pens tend to get a little more clogged up by heavy paint that's on the page. You never want to use your Sakura pens on wet medium. Um, it definitely will clog them up and it'll take you quite a bit of effort to get that ink going again if you're even able to. So inside, outside, inside, outside. And then um, you can also do this with three circles instead of one circle, but you'll end up doing, instead of a C shape to connect them, you'll end up doing an S shape to connect them. Um, I don't think I do that. I don't think I do that on this page. I think I end up doing that on another page in another video. Okay. So I made mine fairly large because I want to embellish the centers of them. Now you could do it just like this and shade it as it is, but I like to add additional patterns on the inside and your patterns on the inside could be anything that you want. Um, you could just aura it and make those parentheses or those C shapes double lined, or you could do a dotted line or a dashed line. Me, I'm adding two kind of triangles one coming from the top, one from the bottom. And then I'm gonna aura those and add a black line on either side that extends all the way from the top to the bottom. And this just adds more interest to it. It makes it more intricate. It kind of, to me, gives it more of that medieval feel that I was getting from this page. And so I continued those lines. 
And then I felt like the gray was disappearing a little bit. And so I'm just going to add a little tiny triangle in the middle of that with a white Posca pin. And that should help to brighten it up. It gives your eye a place to focus and it helps you see that gray triangle a little more. Now, of course, Zentangle is not complete without shading. So I've grabbed the Sepia Ink Derwent Inktense Pencil. I've talked about the Inktense Pencils in other videos. The difference between Inktense Pencils, and I'm just using a six round brush with some water on it to shade and spread that um, pencil around. The difference between Inktense Pencils and watercolor pencils is that Inktense is made with ink and when it dries, it's permanent. You cannot reactivate it. So it's great for mixed media where you want to continue to layer other mediums on top of it because you're not going to reactivate your shadows. Your shadows are going to stay in place or whatever you've colored with your ink tints. Unlike watercolor pencil, if I were to go and decide that I wanted to watercolor something else on top of this or put something else on top, it would reactivate my shadows and then my shadows would pretty much disappear. So that's one of the things that I really like about ink tints is that they're permanent. So I'm just deepening this up. Um, I tend to like really dark shadows. I love adding a lot of drama to the Zentangle because it just makes it pop off the page more. Um, so you are going to lose some of that white, that bright white that we put down in the triangle, but you can still kind of see it and it adds a little bit of brightness there. And again, it helps bring your eye into those little triangles there. After the shading is complete, I added two more clusters of the Crazy Huggins, and then I decided I needed more on this page. So I grabbed this washi tape with these ticket stubs, and I love these because they're neutral colors, so I thought it would go perfect with these pages. And I'm just going to tear off a couple, and I decided I wanted them to look like they were going underneath the Crazy Huggins. So I just used a craft knife to trim around that and um, I did that in a couple places to add a little more interest to the page. Of course, we need some journal words here and this these sentiment strips are from my note to self stamp set. These are from the digital version that you can print out and just trim out your um, sentiments, but you can also get the clear stamp set. Both of those are for sale on my website, so you can check those out. And I love them. I thought these were great words to go along with the chain mail and that kind of more medieval vibe. And I'm just adding some of that um, gold acrylic paint to them just to rough them up. The white looked too clean with this grungy background. So I just added a little bit of the gold paint. But again, that gold paint is so dull to me. I think I need a different gold paint. So I'm going to look into that. If you guys have a recommendation for a really good gold acrylic paint that is reasonable, that's not going to break the bank, put it in the comments down below. I'd love to know what it is because I'm not super thrilled with the one that I have. Here I have a white chalk pencil and I'm just brightening up some of these areas to again to get it to pop off the page. So you can see the gold that pops out the most is that alcohol ink. And yeah, there's so much texture and just yummy, grungy areas on here. I really love it. There's a little heart-shaped uh, gold patch on the top right here. And I decided to put a little arrow through that. And after I made those gold circles on the page on the right, I decided that I wanted to create three big flowers with that and use some washi tape to color them. And the washi tape I decided to use has gold hearts on it. I wanted to pick a washi tape with gold foil to go with all of the gold on the page. So I thought this little heart would tie the two pages in together. If you guys are loving this video and want to see more content like this, it would really help me out if you give it a like down below. Leave a comment, let me know what you want to see or what you thought of this project. And then if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe with notifications on so that you get a notification when my next video comes out. So I decided to do some sketching, like I said, of some flowers and Initially, I was thinking I would have like these open flowers and have some pers perspective on that petal in the front, like there would be some foreshortening. And that made more sense for this blossom down at the bottom because it's got more of an oval center. These other two big circles have 
well, they're circles, they're not ovals. So you wouldn't necessarily have foreshortening like that, but we're just doodling. I'm not trying to make realistic flowers here, so I'm just going to let that go. But I did want to point it out. Normally, you would have more of an oval center if you're going to have that bloom or that petal in the front that has the foreshortening. So I'm just using the black Posca pen and I'm just adding some sketchy lines to the center there just to give it a little more oomph and contrast. And then I'm going to cover these up with some washi tape. I think I mentioned in one of my recent videos that this is one of my favorite washi tapes. The other one was actually journal, journal memory washi tape. And I think this is diary memory washi tape if I'm not mistaken. I'll have all of the supplies linked down below for you guys if you want to check those out. And I'm just using that swivel craft knife. I've covered up the flower. Fortunately for this flower, the base of the washi tape is white, so it's really easy to see those black lines through it. But if you use a dark washi tape, that's going to be more difficult to see your lines, but I'm going to show you a trick that you can use to get around that. So when you're cutting your lines here, you want to cut inside the black line because you still want to see that line. You're going to peel off the outside of the washi tape, what's outside of the petals to leave your petals colored. You want to peel your tape back slowly just in case you haven't cut everything so that you can leave that petal in place, do a bit more cutting. You're going to have a better line if you do, if you cut the petal in one stroke, then you won't have these broken lines. But I have to admit the swivel craft knife is a little harder for me to use than just a standard craft knife. I feel like I have more control with the standard craft knife, but my other one was dull. So I'm using this one today. So just go slowly, peel it back slowly, and um, you should be good to go. And also it's a sketchy flower, so your lines do not need to be perfect by any means. Same thing for the center, you wanna make sure that you can see your black lines, so just cut accordingly so that you can peel that away. And I had to go over mine a couple times. And then if you don't wanna use your knife to pick it away, you can also use tweezers and that's a little bit easier. So here is the dark tape and you can see when I put it down, this black tape, you can't see the lines at all. And if you have a light box, this would be a perfect opportunity to use that. You could put it underneath actually two of the pages and that would work out fine. Mine was in the garage. I didn't feel like digging it out. So I just turned the light on my phone and I kept the phone away from where I was cutting. So there's some space between the two pages. And then because that illuminated the back of the tape, I could see the line. So this worked out just fine. Now you can see when I cut my black petals here, there wasn't any space in between. And so I needed to go back and cut inside of those black lines and pull that away so that I had that negative space so that you could see the individual petals rather than just one big blob of black and gold tape. Of course, we need some shading. So I'm using that same sepia Derwent ink tense pencil. And I'm gonna shade now this is watercolor paper. It's a watercolor journal. So it goes into the acrylic gel printing that I did and the watercolor paper really well. It beads up a little bit on the washi tape, but it still adds a nice shadow. And when it dries, it has a really organic look to that shadow. So it dried really nicely. I like how it dried. So um, even though the washi tape is not porous, you can still watercolor on top of it with these ink tense pencils and it, it turned out great. So I highly recommend that. The only thing that um, I wish I had done, I might still go back and do it, is obviously I couldn't get a shadow on the black petals, but I think what might have looked nice is if I had used a white charcoal pencil or maybe even a white pastel pencil and done highlights where the shadows would be instead, just to give it a little dimension because I feel like the black flower looks really flat compared to these other ones that have some shadow, but it's really not a big deal. So I didn't, I didn't lose any sleep over it or anything, but um, you might want to keep that in mind. If you're doing a darker flower, you could also do highlights instead of shadows. There's never enough gold. And so I wasn't thrilled with the paint that I used on my other um, note to self sentiment strips. So this time I'm using the alcohol ink and I'm just dipping the bottom edge into the alcohol ink. Now you can see that 
Um, the gold is on the bottom and then what seeps up the sediment strip a little bit is the solvent that the gold is suspended in. And so I'm getting a little bit of a grayish tone and a gold tone. So it almost looks like there's three different colors on these sediment strips and you'll see it in the photos when it dries. The gray dries back a little bit more once it's dry, but it does give you that two-tone effect, which is nice. So I'm just going to adhere these with a glue stick and this project is almost done. I don't have this on film, but I did end up using the Durant Ink Tense pencil to also add some stems to these flowers because I felt like, you know, it looked a little weird that they were floating out there in space and the stems help to ground them and give them kind of a directional pull. And look how pretty the, all the gold is. I really like that gold alcohol ink. I think it's awesome. So there we have it, gel tangle, gel printing and zentangle with neutral colors, grays, silvers, golds, black and white. Um, don't forget to let me know what your favorite gold acrylic paint is. I'd love to know because I am in the market for a new one. And be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video so you don't mix, miss the next one. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you real soon.